Sony's PlayStation 5 is finally hitting the UK this Thursday, and if you've already got your pre-order in, good news. This indisputably massive white slab is a true next-gen console in every regard. Yeah, it may look like it was designed by a Star Trek fan off their tits on tequila and Haribo, but the PS5 is a serious upgrade over the older PS4 and incredibly strong competition for Microsoft's new Xbox Series X. So I've been very thoroughly testing out the PS5 for the last week or so, rather than doing far more sensible things like sleeping, eating and actually acknowledging the existence of my family. And I've got to say, I am absolutely hooked. So here's my full Sony PlayStation 5 review, including a rundown of the seven top reasons for why you should be treating yourself to one this Christmas and let's face it you deserve it because 2020 has sucked harder than a souped up Dyson and for more on the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers number one zero to 100 in bugger all time now a major theme of the PS5 and just this generation of consoles in general is the time saving aspect. You've got a super speedy NVMe SSD packed into that crazy ass chassis which means that boot up times are pretty much non-existent. So you definitely don't need to turn on the PlayStation and then go drain your bladder, fix yourself a sandwich and formulate a strategy for saving the world's kakapo population before it's finally ready for action. Contrast that with the previous gen which took half a minute or so to lethargically heave itself into action and that's already a pretty bloody good start. Number 2. OI UI Now if I can just compare the PS5 with the Xbox Series X for a brief moment, the first time that you boot both of them up, only one of the pair actually feels like a next-gen console and that is the PlayStation 5. With the Xbox, that UI is basically the same as on the older One X, which means it's comfortably familiar, but that's far from thrilling when you've spunked out loads of cash on a shiny new box just to be confronted with the same old menus and everything. Now, so here on the PS5, you've got a refreshed and much cleaner design than before, which only takes a little bit of getting used to. And once you've settled in there like an arse into a brand new leather seat, it is a thing of beauty. You've got immediate access to all of your installed games, complete with lush backgrounds and accompanying soundtrack. You can also check out your progress within the game and your trophies earned right there on the main screen, or dive in for a full look at all of the trophies you've bagged and those elusive ones that you're still working on. If you want to take a bit of a break from playing, you can chill and watch some live streams of each game currently happening, and on Astro's Playroom you can immediately dive straight into certain levels and challenges too without having to deal with loading screens or other annoyances. That is a great idea if you've only got a very short bit of free time and hopefully we'll see that feature implemented in more games going forwards. On the main screen you'll also find quick shortcuts to your PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus content and of course the PlayStation Store to grab yourself some fresh new games. And if you scroll up and go to media, you can dive straight into all of your usual video streaming service shenanigans. Overall, it's not massively dissimilar to the old PS4 UI, but it definitely looks and feels a lot slicker. Smart stuff. Number 3. Launch Game Lineup Sure, the PS5 doesn't boast the best ever selection of launch titles, but there are some proper crackers in there and it definitely wins compared with the Xbox Series X's slightly disappointing and meagre selection of exclusive titles. Now, First up, I have much love for Astro's Playroom, which is actually a freebie that's pre-installed on that sizable tech tower. His PSVR adventure was, and still is, one of the best VR titles ever created, so it's no surprise to see the same love and care poured into every shiny inch of this 3D platformer. And while Astrobot Rescue Mission was a perfect showcase of the PSVR's talents, Playroom is a joyous introduction to that DualSense controller and its many upgrades, more on that in a bit. This game is more charming than a Disney Prince pageant, and it's also a marvellous nostalgia-filled love letter to the PlayStation generations, absolutely stuffed full of enjoyable references. And then there's the revamped Demon Souls, at which I suck just as hard as I ever used to. Never have those grimy environments and blood-soaked cobbles looked so absolutely lovely, especially running at a silky smooth 60 frames per second in performance mode. If you're an action junkie or a straight-up masochist, you'll be right at home. Spider-Man Remastered is a visually stunning update to the original classic, while Miles Morales so far seems like a more than worthy follow-up that really feels like it was made for a next-gen console. In fact, the only game I've been slightly less than enthused with is the amusingly titled Sackboy, which may hold some appeal for younger players, but honestly you may as well just play the superior Astro's Playroom. It's a lot shorter than Sackboy, but it's also more polished and offers a better challenge too. Sadly, I haven't had a chance to check out Bug Snacks yet, but that looks like it could be a blast if you're off your tits on various illicit substances. And then of course there's the slew of titles that are hitting both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X at the same time, including the excellent Assassin's Creed Valhalla and a tasty bit of college duty action. So frankly, even the prospect of an extended lockdown to spring 2021 doesn't seem quite so horrific, especially with the likes of New Horizon and God of War just sitting there tantalizingly just around the corner. Number 4. Backwards Compatibility 
Thankfully, launch lineups are a lot less essential compared with consoles back in the day because of the backwards compatibility. And here on the PS5, the support for older games has been absolutely outstanding. Take God of War, for example. I downloaded it onto this curvaceous white beast and was immediately able to pick up exactly where I left off on the PS4 with all of my save games present and correct. And in performance mode, that frame rate stayed smoother than Dwayne Johnson's bont slathered in butter, while loading times are blissfully short. Likewise, Last of Us Remastered also worked a charm, again remembering precisely where I left off with all of my saves intact. And like God of War, those loading times are practically non-existent here on the PS5. Which brings us to... Number 5. Fast Game Loading now one of the best new features on Microsoft's Xbox Series X is that quick resume feature which slaps you straight back into your games precisely where you left off, usually in around 10 seconds or so, perfect for impatient old twats like myself. Sadly there is no equivalent feature to quick resume here on the PS5 but it honestly doesn't even really matter that much because the games load up so bloody fast anyway. Hit X on your chosen title and you'll barely even have time to dunk your ginger biscuit in your brew before you're swinging between skyscrapers or being twatted in Demon's Souls. And of course if you stick your PS5 into rest mode it will automatically update games when you're not playing. No more, hey I've got a spare 10 minutes, maybe I'll have a quick blast on this game. Oh no I won't, I'll try it again tomorrow after it's downloaded this massive 40 gigabyte patch. However it is worth mentioning that the PS5 serves up just 667 gigs of usable storage of which I've already used up almost half in just the first week. Not great news if you like to jump between lots of different games. And while the PS5 will support expandable storage at some point in the hopefully near future allowing you to hook up your very own NVMe SSD, that feature is not supported right now. Number 6. Those graphics. Bloody Nora. Yes, the PS5 does of course support the fanciest, spangliest visual tricks that video games are capable of pulling off, including all the usual super hype stuff like ray tracing. And this is most evident when playing games like Spider-Man in the 4K Billy Big Bollocks graphics modes, with gorgeous looking reflections while you're scaling those shiny phallic skyscrapers. Of course, these little attractive bits of flair are nice and all, but when I'm busy having my arse handed to me by a dozen heavily armed crooks, I'm not too likely to spend any time admiring the purdy eye candy. What I prefer here on the PS5 is the support for that smooth 60 frames per second gameplay in the likes of Spider-Man and Demon's Souls, which makes combat feel incredibly fluid, even with loads of stuff happening on screen at once, including a dozen heavily armed enemies all trying their best to end you. The visuals are very nice indeed, but it is definitely the smoothness that I think separates the previous generation from this generation, especially in those really meaty, beefy titles. And last up, number 7, that DualSense controller. And the final innovation that really makes the PS5 stand out and feel like a true next-gen console is that DualSense controller upgraded from the DualShock of the previous gen. This has been completely revamped beginning with the fresh new design and while that look may split opinions I really like the two-tone contrast. You've got a nice subtle bit of texturing around the handle areas to aid with grip and I found that this thing was comfortable to use for hours at a time without cramping up your fingers or palms. And as with the DualShock, the haptics are bloody brilliant but even better. Suitably dramatic moments in game are highlighted by frantic bouts of rumbling and if you're not actually clutching the DualSense controller at the time you can expect it to go bouncing off across the room. But it's not all about the super violent shakes, of course the DualSense is also capable of much more subtle little rumbles and vibrations as well to just help really draw you into a game and get you fully immersed. I found that those adaptive triggers are sadly underused by many of the launch titles but they definitely impress when they do come into play, offering realistic tension. And combined with the built-in speaker it's incredible how much the DualSense can improve a game's immersion. That touchpad is perfect for super precise actions, once again demonstrated ably by Astro's Playroom. And it's great to see a 3.5mm jack on here too so you can game late into the night without disturbing the fam. As long as you're not in the habit of screaming obscenities every time you see that mother in Demon's Souls game over screen. And the battery life of the DualSense isn't quite as impressive though I was really hoping to get more than 10 hours from a full charge sadly it ended up more like 7 or 8 although a good chunk of that time was playing Astro Bot which of course makes full use of all of the various features. And thank the baby Jesus it is naturally a bit of type C USB for recharging as well so that's yet another micro USB cable we can chuck in the bin and try and wipe from our minds. So that's pretty much all of the random thoughts I had bouncing around in my boldy bonds after a full week of testing out the PS5 and I gotta say I'm super impressed by it. 
I definitely approve of the solid launch lineup and I really, really enjoyed the backwards compatibility as well. Absolutely seamless support for games that you started on the PS4 and you might want to continue on the PS5. I'm sure the design of the console itself and the new DualSense controller may raise a few eyebrows and split opinions. I personally can get on board with both absolutely fine and I really like that new controller and its new functionality to really immerse you in your games. Combine all that with the time-saving features and those sexy new graphics and basically you've got yourself a winner. So I'd say if if you've got spare cash in the bank definitely treat yourself to a ps5 in time for christmas 2020 because let's face it this year needs some serious saving so please do let me know your own thoughts down in the comments below put subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week cheers everyone love you